We have intentionally waited three weeks because bees prefer to build vertically rather than horizontally. And they would have built up only the center combs and moved up into the second hive body before they would have built out all the combs in the first hive body. We want them to completely occupy the first hive body because that encourages construction of a large brood nest and consequently large populations. colonies have been in place for seven weeks. It's been four weeks since we added the second hive body. Notice how the bees have maintained the spherical shape of their nest, even into the second hive body. Not all beekeepers use two hive bodies. In the south, many beekeepers use just one because bees don't need as much space for a large winter food supply. With just one hive body, hives are lighter and easier to move, and it's easier to find the queen and medicate. On the other hand, two hive bodies supply abundant space for rearing brood and storing food. It really boils down to your personal preference. In this series, we start with two hive bodies and later switch to just one. Our intensive feeding and medicating program has promoted this fast population growth. The bees have collected enough nectar for themselves, and now they are strong enough to start collecting surplus nectar for us. The incoming nectar that the bees will store in this shallow super is our harvestable honey. We won't take honey from the hive bodies because the bees will need this later in the year. The queen might move into this honey super and lay eggs alongside cells of nectar. That's not really a problem because brood can be filtered out during the harvesting process. However, many beekeepers don't like brood in their honey supers. If you plan on using a queen excluder, Install it between the hive body and the honey supers. As the name implies, the queen excluder restricts the motion of the queen. Workers can pass through this grate, but drones and the queen are too large. However, I prefer not to use a queen excluder because I think it slows down the process of storing honey. You may have noticed that this honey super has only nine frames. When using frames of drawn foundation, that is, foundation on which the bees have already built, I like to allow extra space between the frames. The bees use this extra space to build thicker combs, which are easier at harvesting time. However, with new foundation, you have to use all ten frames. Before we could get to this point, it was important that we made sure that our honey would not be contaminated by the medications we were using. Our last teramycin dusting was more than five weeks ago, and, if you remember, the manufacturer recommends allowing at least four weeks between the last application and putting on the honey supers. So we know we are safe there. We've also been feeding the colonies sugar syrup with Fumadil B. The manufacturer of that medication says don't use it immediately before or during a honey flow. Well, to be extra safe, we stopped over two weeks ago when our syrup supply ran out. So, we can rest assured that our honey will be pure, wholesome, and free of any contamination from the medications. Earlier, we were talking about the incoming nectar. Nectar is the sweet liquid secreted by flowers of various plants. Bees gather the nectar and turn it into honey. Nectar determines the flavor of the honey. For instance, around here there is a lot of clover. And if the bees were to gather this nectar, we would have clover honey. But the tulip poplar trees are blossoming right now, and we know from beekeeping records of this area that the bees are probably getting that nectar. We are going to transport these colonies to the North Georgia mountains later this season, when the nectar from sourwood trees is flowing. Sourwood honey is one of my favorites, and I'm looking forward to it. Knowing when there is a nectar flow is almost second nature to a veteran beekeeper. 
these are the signs which indicate there is a nectar flow. The bees aren't drinking syrup because they are getting nectar. They're very gentle, and they're very industrious because they are preoccupied with their work. There are a lot of bees festooning, that is, they hook together and form long chains. Wax scales on bee bellies, white wax on the frames, and no robbing behavior because they have enough of their own. And now for some honey and bee trivia. A queen bee lays up to 2,000 eggs per day, and her mere presence in the hive makes workers live longer, resist disease, and forage more for pollen and nectar.